Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In today's episode we're gonna learn how to build IDA Python from sources on Windows. When it comes to building it on Linux or Mac, the build instructions or line are straightforward. But when it comes to Windows, there are lots of challenges that are not covered in the build instructions. Therefore we're gonna tackle those challenges in this video. I'm gonna be following the instructions from the blog post I wrote a while back on how to build IDA Python on Windows from scratch. Now you might be wondering why do I need to build IDA Python from sources? There are many reasons. For example, you want to study the project, therefore you want to build it from sources with debug, symbols, and, and debug it. Perhaps you want to contribute to the open source project as well. And you might have your own reasons. With that, let's get started. So let's talk about the prerequisites. You will be needing Visual Studio 19. The community edition works as well. So one thing I would like to mention is once you get it from, from the link here, make sure you install it in the default location. Otherwise, we'll have to go to the SDK folder and tweak the defaults to the MK file and whatever other make files we need in order to update it and point to a non-standard installation location. You don't want to do that. It can be challenging. You have to go and update certain locations correctly, SDK location, and so on and so on. I tried that, it's not very user friendly. So let's not waste time on that. Just simply install Visual Studio 19 to the default location. So that's the first prerequisite. After you have Visual Studio 19 installed, the next step is to install SIGWIN64. Now you might be wondering why do we need to install SIGWIN? Just because the IDA SDK build system and IDA Python relies on the make utility, which is not something native in Windows. Therefore, we'll have to get the SIGWIN and then make sure we install the proper packages. You don't need to install everything, you just need to search for the make and install make and install unzip. Once you install that, you're good to go for the SIGWIN requirements. The next step is to get Python 3.x. Now you might have already a Python 3.x installed, but you have to make sure that there are some optional features installed. So if you don't have that, you can still run the installer and make sure you check the boxes that are required. So what we need, we need when we're installing, we need PIP. And on the next screen, we need to have at least some of the developer features that we want. So for example, download debugging symbols, pre-compile standard libraries, and also download debug binaries that will bring in Python debug DLLs and so on. So these are what you required and also make sure you install it in C drive. So that's very important as well. Otherwise we'll have to go and also change the stuff in the make file. And again, we're trying to avoid that. After you've installed Python, just to avoid some headache down the line as we proceed in the steps, make sure that you have the package 6 or the module 6 installed. So go to the, if you have multiple Python installations, just go to the Python folder that we want to build either Python 4, in this case, say 3.11, and run PIP if it's not in your pass, just install the 6 module. I have it installed, nothing will happen, but uh, simply install it. Next. We require SWIG. SWIG is, as it says here, it's a simplified wrapper and interface generator. I've spoken about SWIG many times in, in various videos and in particular in the introduction and internals of IDA Python video. It's not enough for us to go to the download page and grab a Windows binary for SWIG. We might run into issues because IDA Python requires a patch version of SWIG, so we'll have to build it from scratch. It is very challenging to build it, build SWIG from scratch with the patches on Windows. Instead, we're gonna use either a Linux distribution, let's say Ubuntu 20, for example, or WSL on Windows. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. Now, the steps will work equally whether you're using WSL or Ubuntu. So I'm gonna be installing and using WSL. For WSL, is really one of the nicest things that Windows 10 introduced. So if you don't have WSL installed, simply go to your app and features, optional features, scroll down all the way down here, more Windows features. Takes you to this old dialog, if you're used to this dialog, instead of the newer modern UI. And here what you want really is to check that box, Windows Subsystem for Linux. 
you're not gonna waste time on installing it just a quick pointer there's so many tutorials for that once you've installed it you simply open your terminal and open an Ubuntu terminal now if you have a VM for example running actual Ubuntu that will as I said work equally now the reason we need Ubuntu or something equivalent is because we're gonna be cross compiling Swig under a Linux environment and generate a Windows binary and so once you are in a Linux terminal make sure you have updated everything and then install the following packages so we'll need a bunch build essentials Ming, Ming W64 so this is used for the cross building these are prerequisites for Swig and so on auto tools, auto make, patch elf, wget and so on and if you have difficulty installing Ming W just simply add the repo as per the suggestion here next step is to get the patched Swig so and this is hosted on the Ida Python organization so we go to that location here to, to that repo this contains the patches from hex rays we simply clone it once we clone it we should be ready to start building swig it requires one more prerequisite which is the pcre library as well so let's do that so let's clone and then okay now that we finished cloning let's see here we're gonna make a folder here called ida py and put everything and work in that folder so the next step here we should wget the pcre into the swig source directory so we're gonna go to this folder and into the swig and get the pcre version so this version i know it works we can use it now we need to patch the build script a bit and change it just so it basically knows how to cross build so that's the whole point of using Linux environment just to cross build the whole of Swig so we're gonna just change that accordingly so we're going after the tools PCRE build so let's go there PCRE build and edit it so PCRE build and here we're just looking for that line here now let's just search for it so cre so that's the line don't think there's any other line that's it and add the host so here let's just add the host and that should be good then we should be able to just issue the regular build instructions like swig actually instructs but we will be targeting windows so now just run the PCRE build script again so now we can say tools tools and PCRE build and let this run when it's finished we're gonna build Swig okay now it's finished so let's focus now on building Swig now we, all we need to do is run autogen.sh first so we'll let it uh, do that and when it finishes we're gonna simply go and prefix the configuration script with those flags with those loader flags and also pass to the configure script the host as well we're instructing it for cross compilation and the prefix we're gonna just emit everything into the temp folder it's fine like this when we say make install it will emit everything into that folder all we care is to grab the binary at the end of the day move it to windows and we should be almost done with all the steps so now we finished autogen let's now use that command line to run the configuration that will be looking for the prerequisites and so on and then when it finishes we're just gonna run make it will take a while and then we should have swig executable for windows now the configuration finished we're ready to build and for that expect based on the speed of your machine at least like two to ten minutes so let's just let it run and when it finishes we'll continue now that swig finished building we just say make install and that will copy the binary to the temp folder so let's take it have it install everything and we're gonna zip that package grab it outside of our Linux environment and go and work on Windows exclusively since that's the whole point so it finished installing into the prefix folder we specified now let's go to 
depending really on what environment you're using since I'm under WSL so I have to go to the mount folder like that go to temp for example and transfer it to the Windows file system I'm gonna make a folder here called Swig for example and then copy everything in the temp Swig 4 into the current location when it's done we should have everything in the Windows file system so C temp swig and we have the swig win here bin and this is what we need so this is the main executable we need and of course the dependencies so there'll be a bunch of i files and so on and these are needed for swig and we'll be passing that pass to swig to ida python in order to use it properly now let's go back to the instructions and now we are basically working with the SDK. We're done with the WSL or Ubuntu or Linux environment. So grab yourself the SDK. The SDK is not free. You have to be a client and once you buy IDA you receive an email where you can access the members or the customers download center and you download your SDK. It will work equally if you have the Pro SDK or the IDA Teams SDK. In my case here, I have the Pro SDK. I simply put it in a folder of my choice. It didn't change anything yet. And before we are able to use the SDK, we have to do some initialization steps. To initialize the SDK, all we have to do is follow those instructions. We need to expose two environment variables. We're building for Windows NT and we're creating native 64-bit binaries. So we're gonna do that. Now the SDK is almost configured. Next step is we need to, on Windows, we need to call make environment one time for different build profile. So for example, we need if we need to build for debug builds, we just have to set the A64 to one. Here we are targeting IDA64.exe. And here for optimized IDA64, we simply specify the NDebug equal one. And then we invoke make environment. Now for IDA.exe, we don't need to set up EA64 equal one. So all you have to do is simply say make environment. For optimized IDA EXE builds, same story, no debug equal one and make environment. Okay. IDA Python will be building multiple configurations. So, so let's just set up all those for the SDK to be happy fully. So what we're gonna do is simply call make environment for that configuration this one then the other one and this is just for result EA64 and this one is for optimized non EA64 builds now if you're wondering about what's EA64 and so on we've covered that so many times just for you to know that IDA EXE and IDA64 basically hex rate is trying to deprecate those two binaries into one and as of IDA 8.3 you can basically open IDBs with one of those IDAs basically you don't need to use this one anymore you can just solely use IDA64 and work with 32-bit binaries and so on so going forward we might expect IDA EXE to disappear and uh, and then that would mean that we might no longer need to have two copies of the same plugin. So this one here, IDA Python 3, just because we did not specify EA64, and here IDA Python 3 underscore 64, is because we specified EA64 environment variable when we're building. Just keep in mind, EA64 does not mean whether the binary is a 64-bit binary, native binary or not. This is just to control internals of IDA, how big is the addressing and so on. I've, I've spoken about that in one of the videos about the SDK, so please check that out. If you've done everything correctly, you should be able to build anything in the SDK. We're not talking about IDA Python anymore, so you can build anything. So let's say if you go to the plugins folder and say hello, for example, this one has a make file. So if we just simply say make, now depending on the environment variables we set, so I did not specify and debug or EA64 under this environment. So what do we have here? We have just X64 and NT. These are the relevant ones. That means if I build, we're going to be building for IDA.exe. So we're just calling make here. I think just because I have built it before, nothing happened. So I can delete that. Plugins. 
and then let's say you didn't have it from before then you say build or make and it should compile it correctly and this is a good indication that you're on the right track or even if you just simply say make from the root and it will build everything all the loaders and so on and so on okay so let it finish I don't want this now that we have the SDK ready you should see all those once we did the make environment in the SDK when you unzipped it you didn't have those config files so you, did, you just had all those files and those came just because we said make environment for all the different configurations so here there's one step I mentioned which I already have done as well previously myself is when you unpack the SDK so if we go to the SDK here we have the bin folder usually it's empty it doesn't have IDA what you need to do I did this step already simply go to your IDA installation and copy the whole of IDA files into the bin folder and that will be your development IDA version now here we're just ready to basically start building IDA Python and the first step really is to clone IDA Python so as well IDA Python we can grab it from the repo and we have to clone it into the plugins folder into the SDK so here just go to the plugins folder and and clone it git clone this as IDA Python and once it's finished cloning we're almost ready to really build it so we just have to specify a bunch of environment variables and invoke the build script point it to where we have this wig and where the either python build script should deploy the plugin and it was a weird building for debug or not and that step can also take a long while because swig is slow and building the swig generated files as well take time so let's start setting up and preparing to build so make sure we set the proper environment variables this is very important so since i'm working with 3.11 i'm gonna set the major version to 3 and the minor to 11. since python 3.11 is my is in my pass i don't need to specify here the full location now here build with hex rays by the way so if you freshly unpack the sdk then in your include folder in the sdk you might not have hex rays.hpp so if you bought the decompiler then you go to your plugin binary folder after you install ida and the decompiler gets installed you go to the hex rays sdk and include copy hex rays hpp into the sdk include and that will allow you to specify with hex rays swig home that's the swig home here and here just simply say where we want to build it the whole environment is ready now everything we need is set so with hex rays we because we copied the hpp files swig that's what we did cross compilation in the wsl and where do we want to deploy the newly built and generated ida python and all the other scripts and examples and so on now once we do that you might hit the problem so this will start building it will take some time but we might hit some issues and i'll show you how to deal with that so here as you can see it started to build but there's a high chance that it might stop working at one point so here we are as I said you might hit the problem I did hit that problem one of the easiest way is just to disable some build target into the make file so let me show you what you need to edit in the make file in IDA Python in order to get this working all the way to the end so to fix the situation go back to IDA Python sources open the make file and here in just around line 22 we have the targets that are being built I had to disable a bunch of other things so here I had to disable py doc injections, public tree, test IDC docs and docs and kept those and this worked for me at the time of recording so you may, might have to tweak this and run the build command line again so here python and this should continue and hopefully at the end you will see either python generated and copied and deployed properly into the path we specified so here when we said either install we did specify deploy it into the SDK copy of IDA binaries and th this will take up to 10 minutes but that's it basically so let's let it finish and see what happens okay it finished building 
I had to go back and forth a few times and but once you disable certain targets the build will succeed now let's take a look what has been generated freshly so now we can go to the bin folder plugins and here look at this we have newly built things so these are sorted by date so yeah, these are freshly built these are just built artifacts and so on but this is the python dll 64 and also it made a copy as well of the scripts and examples and so on so that's completely built from scratch all right that's it then we successfully built either python from sources Going forward, I really encourage you to contribute to the open source AIDA Python project, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.